when you see someone who's the best in the world at what they do, they're being rewarded in public for what they've practiced millions of times in, in private. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies, and changing your strategy means reinventing your life, recreating you, and you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You have the power to make that decision. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. You have to tap into suffering every day of your life because we have so much scarring that we have to clean up. You have to look at suffering as almost like I look at failure. To succeed, you must fail. In failure and in suffering, all the answers are in there. No matter what you face, no matter how bad it is going to be, when there is a challenge, and by a challenge I mean anything in life, any challenge, anything that you're facing, the only way to overcome the challenges that you face is to start walking. Take that step every day, no matter what you are facing, get up and start walking. You can't give away what you don't have. Now it sounds ridiculous, okay? But it's more than what meets the ear as you hear this. You can't give away what you don't have. People who are not good at giving away love can't give away love because they don't have it to give away. If I want to give you a dozen oranges, I can't give you those dozen oranges unless I go out and pick up 12 oranges someplace. Otherwise, all it is is just empty rhetoric. And the same thing is true of virtually everything in your life. You can't give away love for others if you don't have love in here to give away. If what you have in here is contempt, if what you have in here is anger, if what you have in here is fear, then these are the things you're going to be giving away in your life. There are many ways to get the things that we want for ourselves in our lives, but basically it all begins with how we choose to think. As you think, so shall you be. Seven little words that I think are perhaps the most important things that we can learn and master in our lives. This old proverb notion that I become what I think about all day long. And once you know that what you think about is what expands, you start getting real careful about what you think about. You don't allow your thoughts to be on anything that you don't want or that you wouldn't want to have manifest or show up for you in your life. 
have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing. One of the central principles of my life is that no one knows enough to be a pessimist about anything. And that each and every one of us, when we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity, closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. Having an open mind doesn't necessarily mean uh, finding fault with all of the things that you've been taught by others. It means opening yourself up to the potentiality and the possibility that anything and everything is possible. So having a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing really means finding within ourselves the ability to get rid of a trait that I find so common in contemporary, in the contemporary world. Do you know that most people that I meet spend their lives looking for occasions to be offended? They actually are out there hoping that they can find some reason to be offended. And there's no shortage of reasons. They're out there everywhere. The way this person dressed, the what this person said, they turn on their TV, they hear the news, they're offended by this. Someone didn't, uh, someone used language that they didn't like. Someone doesn't share the same customs that you. And people all day long, in fact, if you keep track tomorrow, you will find uh, probably a hundred reasons that you can go around being offended. But a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing is a mind that says, I'm never looking for anything to be offended by. And that whatever anybody else out there has to say, my response to that is, that's an interesting point of view. I've never considered that before. Talking about past and future and excessive emphasis on past and future in your life, yes, of course you need to have there's nothing wrong with having a certain intention of what you want to achieve, take steps towards it. It's, it's part of living here in this dimension. You can't just say, I'm never going to plan anything anymore. Just take life as it comes. Well, some people try to do that, but they're not that happy either after a while. <laughs> uh, so then your life will get very diffused. And so to have an intention, to have to make a plan, perfectly fine. What either a short-term plan, like I'm going to meet you tomorrow at four o'clock. How would you ever meet anybody if we didn't have time? <laughs> and and future in a practical level, of course, it's needed. The question is whether future takes over your mind. Being able to use it for practical purposes is, of course, great. But I call that. Clock time is fine, but psychological time is when the future takes over your mind and your entire thought patterns are geared only towards future and you treat the present moment as either just a means to an end because it enables you to get to the next one. You're always reaching out, so to speak, internally to the next, yet never quite here, always looking for some fulfillment there. So you can never embrace the fullness of now or you make the now into even an enemy. Some people are always unhappy. You, perhaps we all know some, one or two people like that. Three. <laughs> We, who are, wherever they are, they are, they're complaining, it's never quite right. Wherever they are, or whoever they are with, after a little while, they're very uncomfortable again, that it should be somewhere else. You know the bumper sticker that you see in some cars, in the various versions of it, says, I'd rather be golfing. And then another one says, I'd rather be fishing. I'd rather be this, I'd rather be there. When I visited the, the spiritual teacher, Ram Das, who lives in Hawaii, uh, he has a bumper sticker on it. Oh, Ram Das was the person who in the 70s wrote the book Be Here Now. That, and anyway, he has a bumper sticker on his car that says, I'd rather be here now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so and, and then you realize you can actually, you can still pursue whatever an intention where you want to get to, a plan, 
I call that it's a bit like a journey. Your life is a, is a journey. You're going, you know you want to go from here to there. Whether you're going to get there, we don't know. Maybe on the way you'll branch out to somewhere else. But at least you have a certain direction. It's good to have some direction in your life. But while you are traveling, if the, the, your destination takes up most of your attention and you're continuously focusing on there, you miss all the journey, really. You can't enjoy the journey anymore. And most of your life is the journey. The arriving is relatively rare. The wedding, ah, the, <laughs> and a few more graduation. Ah. Uh, but so, so those moments are not the fine few between. So the rest is the journey. And if you can't enjoy the journey, which means the step you're taking at this moment is really the most important thing. Yes, of course, you know you're going that way, but this step is still to be enjoyed because that's where ultimately your whole life consists of the step you're taking at this moment. There is never anything else.